But the people mm. who I grew up around didn't really understand that because as I grew up, we don't get presented with a pleasant view of Africa. The Africa that we see is a place where I, I've spoken to African Americans and, and some people have been miseducated to the point that they say that they've appreciated Europeans enslaving us because at least we got to grow up in the United States. I've heard that from not just one person who is an African American. So we have been brainwashed to an extent. And it's because we don't see positive views of our roots, of what Africa is. Um, and a lot of people in that previous bunch, they spoke to that. So I've actually, of course, I grew up and was born here in Atlanta. I've lived in different parts of the United States, but I've also lived in Senegal. I've lived in Guinea. I've lived in Asia as well as South America. And so having the opportunity to view my blackness outside of the context of just America allowed me to expand. First of all, reading and, and reading research allowed me to expand my view of what blackness is, because sometimes here in the United States, we think black is just black American. And it's because that is what we are familiar with. And so we will see outsiders or Africans as something else because it is viewed as foreign. And sometimes you hear conversations like there's this, um, this new conversation about ADOS, where it's a a American descendants of slavery. And so there's this reparation talks that are constantly happening. But my point in all of this is there is so much more that we need to do to be able to see each other as one. I believe that Reading and research is one step, but traveling is definitely another step. The, mm. the most important one, though, and I think the most easiest to facilitate is just open dialogue. So what you're doing here right now is allowing us to actually speak to one another from each other's perspective. I've built my entire like I've been on your platform before and I talked about my organization, African Unity Initiative. The reason that I started that is because when I was in college, I was I was at Howard University, HBCU, and I had Nigerian friends. I had friends from the Caribbean and I had friends who were African-American and none of them associated with one another. And I started to notice it around maybe like being on campus for two months and I would just ask questions to my Nigerians and Ghanaian friends and, and they had the same um, misinformation about African-Americans being lazy. The same thing I heard from my friends from the Caribbean and my African-American friends believed just from the offset that the Africans didn't like us just because. And so it inspired me to have to create something called the African Diaspora Dialogue, which has grown to become a podcast now that I host on my YouTube channel. But I, I felt like it needed to happen while I was in college. And my organization grew out of that to show that the the African diaspora needs to unify all of us coming together, understanding what's going on with each other can make a great impact to dilute the exploitation that each of us in our isolation go through. So long as we see the problems in Nigeria as Nigeria's problems, the problems in Atlanta as Atlanta's problems, or the problems in Haiti as Haiti's problems, we will forever be victims and vulnerable to the exploitation from white supremacy or the Chinese or whoever wants to come in and colonize and gentrify whatever area that we inhabit. So it is it is not our fault that we're in this situation. And I always use this analogy is as if somebody shot you intentionally and you wait around for that person to call the ambulance for you. The person who shot you, you shouldn't want them to be anywhere near you. And I feel that's the what we what we sound like as African people, as African descendants, wanting um, Europeans or the American government to provide certain things for us. Yes, they are the culprits. They are the ones that initiated the problems that we have right now. But it is our responsibility to make sure that we are aware of what happened 
we are aware of what's happening and that we connect to one another where we're able to build things without always depending on them or depending on their education to fuel our knowledge, to fuel what it is that we know. Um, Come out. Go ahead. Come out. What, what, what is that? What is the YouTube channel? What is your YouTube channel? It is um, youtube.com slash C slash African unity. I put it in the private chat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I, I, every, every show that I have is talking about the African diaspora coming together in different ways, ways that we can talk about it, whether it be, I have a show about male, female relationships, black male and black female relationships and what we need to do there. I have a show specifically called the African Diaspora Dialogue, where I have a panel of people from the Caribbean, from the continent, from South America, from the United States, where we just talk about different topics that constantly permeate throughout these types of conversations that we are having today. And I believe that consistency in these types of conversations are the only way that we're going to move forward. I believe that having them and not being passive about it or not holding in those feelings, we can have better dialogues where we're actually listening not to get the next word, but listening to gain understanding of why this person believes this or why this person thinks that way. I believe that knowing one another's history is a very important part of that, but that comes from us knowing our own history. I'll be honest with you. Um, when you talked about not knowing the history of African-Americans, there are a lot of African-Americans here that don't know the history of African-Americans because when we go to school, we have Black History Month, um, and then that's pretty much it. Unless you go to college, and you major in African-American studies, that's when you really get a deep dive in our history, even as a black person growing up in America. I taught my parents certain things about what happened during their lifetime because I studied African-American studies because I got a degree and I went into that specialized direction. Or if you go to a school like Howard University where they implement African-American studies in no matter what major you're in, they they show you black contributions in mathematics, the black contributions in psychology, the black contributions in, in engineering, whatever it is that you major in, they will give you the black perspective of that. But that's only one school out of how many. And so it is up to us to really be intentional about how we educate ourselves as adults, as well as how we educate our children, because miseducation is actually worse than not having the information from the beginning. Because what, what happens is when you are already supposedly educated, if somebody tries to tell you something that's contrary to your education, then you will actually fight against them. If you've been, I know PhDs, like master's degree holding people who are black, who will fight me to tooth and nail when I try to tell them that something that they learned along the way in their education was, you know, not true. Because it is very difficult to believe that somebody that you've entrusted with your education has intentionally misguided you or they misguided you because they didn't know. And so we have to try to start as young as possible. But like I said, I believe that to answer your question, like where do we go from here? I think this type of dialogue on a platform like yours is so important. And I believe that the work that you're doing in presenting Africa in all of your other videos is very important, especially for those of us in the diaspora who we don't really have that many positive images of Africa. So when you're showing us the metropolitans, the the um the metropolises that exist on the continent, when you show us the culture, when you show us the food, when you show us the different travel arrangements, the 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 beauty of Africa, it will it will inspire more African Americans, more Afro Caribbeans, more Afro Latinos to embrace their African roots and be inspired to go back and visit. I have so many conversations with African Americans where they talk about their bucket list of where they want to travel. It's always Paris, Italy, London, Europe, China, this, this, and it's very rarely Africa. 
And that's because we don't really see ourselves. We don't see any positivity. We see the commercials. We see the malnutrition. We see the poverty. We see that. And, you know, people will want to escape from that and not be, you know, not want to relate to that. And so I appreciate you having this conversation, but I also appreciate everything that you do in how you present Africa to the world, specifically to those of us in the diaspora, because we need it. I want to say thank you so much. Um, that's his YouTube channel on the um, screen. Please make sure you click on the link and make sure you go check out his YouTube channel and go support the brother. Uh, Jamal, thank you so much. Let me have Kofi here. I think Kofi will beat me today. Uh, Mala is it Malakai? Malakai, hold on for me and let Kofi speak here and then I'll, I'll bring you on board. So, um, yeah, thank you. You, you just stay, in, uh, stay on. Let me just talk to these guys and I'll get back to you. All right, hi, Kofi. Okay, all right. What Maya? I just want to say that um, first, I want to say thank you very much. I've been watching your videos since 2013. And uh, you inspire me a lot, and uh, you always bring me close to home. Because I lived gone like uh, ten years ago, and um, you know, you you're the only one who really gave me close to home. So I want to say thank you very much for the videos that you've been making and all your interviews and everything that you do. I want to say thank you very much. I also want to say thank you to everyone on the platform, everyone watching. Um, Everybody had their own say um, on this, what was going on. I, I had a comment under the video as well, um, the one that she just made. And uh, people were talking about Africans don't like African-American, which uh, for me, um, uh, it's, it's, it's just misunderstanding. Um, first of all, I'm not going to say go a lot deep into stuff because the job I do, I'm a soldier, so I can't really say a lot of stuff. But what's going to happen is that uh, uh, I wanna, all I want to say is that I think um, the reason why African Americans think that um, Africans don't like them is because of I can say this based on my experience and how I came to this country. Uh, I had the same mindset when I got here. They was like, "Oh, don't play with African Americans and stuff," you know, um, because um, the Africans here think that uh, you know, you know how we are. We came from a home where we had to take care of our family, so we come out here and we work hard and. Um, we send money home all the time, and our brothers and sisters, African Americans, just uh, we do the same job. But then most of them always complain that they are broke, they don't have money. And you African who work the same job, same time, you like, wow, I send money home, I take care of my family, and I still have enough to take care of myself, you know. So you know they 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 kind of use this to 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 think that the the African American guy is lazy or don't like to work or this and that. So um, this is what that that's that is what is happening. That is what is happening. It's not like African American Africans don't like African Americans. It's just like the way they see them uh, do things, and even in school, the way Africans take school serious. In school, Africans are like up there. They want to be first. They want to be A A student. Like Africans are one of the top people in the United States with graduate degrees and bachelor degrees and master's degrees. So looking at people who came to the country and people who are already here and they are doing five times or 10 times more better than they are. It makes them feel like, oh, wow, well, what are they doing? They're from here. They claim they're from the United States and we came to the United States and we are doing better than them. So that's how, that's the mindset, you know? So I'm not saying that uh, um, that's everybody's mindset. I don't think like that because um, I have African-American friends, but one funny thing is though, I don't know why every time I tell them, because I want to go home, I'm trying to go home soon because I've been here for a while and, Every time I tell them I want to go home with them, they're like, no, I'm not going. I ask them why. They always have this mindset of Africa is like trash and dirty and, that, you know, so I found it hard to really introduce them to African videos and stuff because my my consciousness is telling me they might be judging this country or they might be judging, they might be judging the market, they see, it might be judged. So, like, it's kind of hard to really introduce them to African culture because they're not really open-minded to really learn about this African um, culture that we have. So my own, my main question is though, um, um, most of them too don't feel like they are Africans. Like when you say, hey, um, I mean, every black person is an African. That's me, that's how I see it. Every black person is an African because once you have the blackness in you, you are African. I love Africa, 
this is all I have from Ghana, though. <laughs> I just saw, but every time I wear this, I, every time I go out, I always put this on, and people always, it looks good on you. And people always give me compliments when I put this on. But um, I feel like once you are black, you are African, and it, you shouldn't feel offended when somebody call you African. Uh, instead of doing African American, you should claim to you should claim Africa. We have we have to come together. That's what what Maya preach every day. We have to be one. We if we if Africa fifty four countries or is it fifty four or something like if we become one country, one united Africa, we can we can control this world because we have everything that everything that you can name. We have everything that you can name. So I'm not I'm, I don't know why. Um, Egyptians feel like they're different. Ghanaians feel like they're different. Nigerians feel like they're different. Uh, South Africans feel like they're different. I don't know why. Even in the United States, there's differences when it comes to the United States. Some differences, some of them claim they are Africans, but then when you go to African restaurant, it's, it's a Ghanaian restaurant, it's all Ghanaian working in the Ghanaian restaurant. If it's Nigerian restaurant, all Nigerians working in a Nigerian restaurant. So there's kind of division in Africa for African-American to join as to be one, Africa has to be one. We have to be one before we all can be one. If not, we're not going to be one. It's not going to be today or tomorrow. It's from the top to down or down to the top. We all have to come together as one brother and sister, one blood, one blackness, and be black. We have to be black. We have to be black. That's, that's who we are. You can never change. I don't know. I can never be white. <laughs> I can use all the lotions you can give me in the world i can be white as much as i can i was still i'm still gonna be black because that's who i am so i'm very passionate about africans and african africans for africa um i haven't really done anything about it like i try to educate the people that i work with in the army i try to get my friends close to me so i can tell them about africa i'm building my house right now in africa if you check my youtube channel yeah, my YouTube, you're gonna see I'm I'm also because of what Maya, you inspire me. I've been watching people's video because of you. Uh, I watch people's videos, people building houses. I, I take their leads, I talk to them, they show me the way, and I'm doing the same thing. So if you know, so if 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 we Africans in the United States and African American in the United States can also go back home, like people say all the time, what Maya say all the time, go home to visit. You don't have to leave there. Go visit, see how it looks. If you want to leave the make up arrangement and move to Africa, because Africa is the future or now. It's now and the future because we are going to take over very soon if we go back. There's more Nigerian doctors, there's more African doctors in the United States than, than, than Africa, or uh, there's more African doctors in the diaspora than Africa itself. You know, if they go back to give back to Africa, you think that we're gonna be they're gonna be gonna be looked down? No, we are very powerful, and if we come together, we can really change the world and make everything what we want to see. So, I mean, I want to say all oh, high praises to what Maya. I want to say thank you very much because you really inspire me, and I hope to meet you one day in the future when I come to Ghana. That's maybe that's that's <laughs> so somebody should be on. I'm gonna be on. All right, thank you. Um, I think I have um, uh, so. Uh, living my best life. Just hold on for me one minute. Let me talk to uh, uh, Malaika and I'll get back to you. Soon. Yeah, but uh, isn't Malaika? I hope I mentioned it right. Hi. Yeah. Is it? Um, am I talking? Can y'all hear me? Yeah, you're talking. You're live. You're live. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, first off, thank you, Water My. It's it's a great honor to meet you, man. Mm. Uh, yeah. Um, I would like to say first off, because I'm young. I'm 18. I'm just starting out, but I do have a goal in mind to go to Africa one day, Ghana specifically, because 2019 was a year of return. So, but I've heard from one of your biggest artists that were there, uh, you're turning it into beyond a return. So anybody can come, you know? So I, I thank you for that. I'm, I'm really uh, looking forward to doing that. But first off, what I want to say is I really want us to move forward, uh, economically in Africa when we do come over there, because I do have a goal. I'm just saying like, when we go there, I'm not thinking about, you know, racism and how black people have struggled and stuff, because, you know, in Asia, Asians, not in Asia, but uh, people in Japan and Korea, they appropriate other cultures like black culture and Spanish uh, culture and Chica culture, which is Mexican culture here in the uh, United States. They appropriate that because everybody in Asia is Asian. 
You have no mm -hmm. cultural appropriation. There is no racism over there. Everybody is Asian, so nobody cares. What I want to know is when we go over there, we have to think forward economically. Like when I when I go over there, I want to um, I want to convince Africans to take notes from George Washington Carver. He made a lot of products with uh, peanuts. If we can make materials and products within our own communities and stuff, we can trade that and make commerce over that and build up our communities from the ground up by ourselves. That's what I want to happen, you know. But yeah, it's it's just a beautiful thing that you that you're on here. You're doing what you're doing. You know, that's my two cents, you know. But uh yeah, that's it. Like I just I just wanna know, yeah. Um where are you right now? Hmm? Where are you right now? Where I am? Yep. I'm in Ocala, Florida, right now, United States. Okay. I, 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 you, you've never been to Africa, yeah? No, never. No, I want you to. Like, um, which year would, are you planning to be in Africa? Which year? Probably three years in ahead. Like, when I get my job, you know, and build up my weapon. Uh, I, I just want to tell you that uh, you've won yourself a ticket to Africa, sponsored by Wamaya. Um, oh. In oh, oh, okay. So, Thank you. Uh, just um, send, I'm gonna send you an email. You send my uh, PA a message, she's gonna respond to you. And uh, let me know which country of your choice that you want to go. I'm just gonna book the ticket for you in and out. All right, so um, this is the email address. Send the email address to she's gonna respond to you as soon as possible. Um, yeah, who does? Um, Can you send in a private chat though? So this is the this is the um, email address. Send the email address. Make it um, clear that what Amaya said is giving you um, he's giving you a ticket to um, which country do you want to go to? By the way, Ghana. Ghana first. Why yeah, not Ghana? So just um, send a message. Send a message that you um, what Amaya um, says you want to purchase a ticket for you. Just let her, let let us know the dates every time on your own accord. It's not like. I'm forcing you to come right now. Just let me know on your own accord the dates, everything that you want to come, and I'll purchase the ticket for you to come to Africa. Okay. Thank you, thank you, man. Thank you. Send, a, send an email, yeah. Send an email. She's gonna respond to you. Um, your accommodation, everything is sponsored, and your flight is sponsored. Um, everything is sponsored. Just so. All right, send it. You send an email. I'm got your email. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna I send uh, an email on your screen. I want to make sure that you send an email before I let it go, please. Hold on, what? Repeat that again. I, I want you to. Send it's on email. the screen. Please, uh, because oh. I want to confirm that you've like this is the email. Make sure you have it, okay? And then send yeah, the right. email. All right, good. So. Just let write the dates. Just think about it. Um, send the email first, and let us know the dates that you want to come. Um, this is a two weeks um, sponsorship trip to Africa, so you're gonna spend two weeks in in Ghana. Um, whatever you wanna do, just two weeks. Your accommodation, everything is sponsored. Uh, what you need to do is to just pick your bags and then just look on your way to Africa. Yeah. So just let me know. Just dates, everything. Uh, we'll buy. We purchase the ticket for you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Sir. All right, brother. Uh, love like you, man. That. I'll see. I'll see myself when you get here. All right. You too, man. All right. Um. Um. Hello. Uh, hey, you have somebody saying I should ask you? Do you have a passport? Do I have a what? Do you have a passport? Somebody saying I should ask you if you have a passport. Oh no, nah. man. My mom's working on that right now. You yeah, I'm going to get a passport. <laughs> I'm gonna get it. You better, I'm you better get, get a passport tomorrow, yeah. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm you gonna get right. a passport tomorrow. We'll make it happen. I want you to be the first guy we're gonna fly from America to Ghana. So please, right. um, just uh, get a passport. Right yeah. yeah, yeah. Like All right, man. Thank you. Um, living my best life in Ghana. I can't hear you. You muted our mic. Can you hear us now? Uh, I'm muted our mic. You can hear us now? 
Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, I can hear you. Good. Loud and clear. What's up, fam? What's How up, everybody? Greetings from the uh, USA, Memphis. Yeah. What's up, oh, I am Maya. I am Maya. <laughs> <laughs> so happy you had us uh, to have to be a part of this conversation. It's necessary. It's on point. It's right on time. It's a conversation that nobody ever wanted us to have. Uh, you're bringing together African people all over the world that need to recognize one gender is Africa for Africans. Our ancestors have told us so many times, and now we are at that point. I'm so glad to be alive and a part of history in the making where Marcus Garvey, Harriet Tubman, uh, so many, y'all, Santua, so many people, our spirits of the ancestors are really flowing now yeah, to get us right home to Africa. And they are so proud of us. All of us that are making this effort to bridge this gap to, between all of us Africans all over the world. It is our time. It's yes, time it for us to seize that time. And look, Morda, uh, I wanted to just drop this in here on the brothers. Uh, I commend all of the brothers on this platform right here. Brother, you in the A, which are uh, your podcast and your, how you're getting out the information. Uh, my other brother, I heard you say you was in the military or something like that, but your mind is sound. Yes. Your mind is sound. And that's the type of people that we can trust. And young brother, you, hey, you just got to look. Nobody ever thought we would get trips sponsored to Africa <laughs> by Native Africans. Nobody would have thought that, bro. You were first. Yeah. That I know of. I put it like that. But what I wanted to say, y'all, is right now, with this conversation being had, we're sitting under the neem tree right now. And what I mean by sitting under the neem tree, the neem tree is a strong herbal tree that grows in Ghana. And I think it grows in other parts of Africa. Wow. But it's a medicine for healing. So this conversation, it might be a little bitter on our palate. It might be a little bit with the little nuances, the little directions, and the little details and everything that we need to know about each other but it's necessary we got to drink the bitter medicine so we can come out on the other end and heal together heal we together. can't do it with he said this and he said that okay we was all miseducated now i'm yes. talking about africa africa first i'm race first i'm totally race first africans for africa are all around the world a home and abroad so we're gonna drink this name tea together we're gonna have these uncomfortable conversations we're going to deal with the nuances of where we are and where we are going. Because when we get to Africa, as much as we say Africa is a heaven, it's some things that go wrong, but it's not for me to talk to the outside world about. It's not. It's for me to deal with in-house with family. And yes. that's how we do it. Not to go out and broadcast about how I get upset about riding a tro-tro or how the taxi driver moving too. That's conversations we have amongst ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're going home to build. And Maya, my hats off to you 100%, my brother, 100%, because we never thought, the world never thought that us Africans around the world would have this conversation, and we having it, and we understanding each other, and the time is up, we going home. I'm so mm. proud. I'm just really proud that this is really happening at this point in time, because we used to say, I hope that I'm able to see it in Man, my lifetime. Boy. We used to talk about this. I hope that one day, that before I die, that many of us will get to Africa. But the phenomena has happened. I, I'm so glad that things have happened. Things happen for a reason to bring African people together all over the world. Yes, we got some work to do. Yes, we got some repairs that need to be repaired. But the thing about it is, Africans in the diaspora, we have never had a place of refuge where we feel like we can repair the right. damage that has been done to us. It's so much that we have to deal with. It's so much terror that we have to uh, be a, a experience every day. Every day all day where we have traumatic experience that happen to the people that we know where we take it in because it could be us anything could happen where something so bad and terrible can happen to us at any time yeah, yeah, yeah. but because of our bravery because we know how strong we are of a people because we know of where it is where we come from our ancestors have left the 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 blueprint they have left the evidence. They have left the herbs. 
They have left everything that we need to heal ourselves. All we got to do is come together as African people and recognize who we are. The strength of African to people. To get that together with each other. Yes. For real. It's time. It is our time. It is our time. I appreciate you, Aya Maya, for the things that you are doing for us. This is epic. It's epic. <laughs> It's epic. I'm so glad that I'm alive. I'm so happy to be African. What a great day to be African people. What a great day to know who our motherland is, to not think um, uh, horribly about Africa anymore. All the things that have been fed to us, our, the shape that we were in, in separate places, now we're able to come together under the guise of all of this colonization on the continent, all of the slavery and, and racism and white supremacy that we deal with on a daily basis, we can push through all of it and say, hey, you know what? We African. And no matter what, we going to build Africa and make it great again, make it our home again by any means necessary. <laughs> Uh, that's, that's, that's really beautiful. Um, I just want to say thank you so much. I don't even know what to say right now, because like mm -hmm. you said, the exodus is happening, the inflation is happening, We're definitely coming back home. I see it happening. So we all need to stick together. Like I said, for me, I'm here for everybody. The platform is for all of us, you know, whatever you want to share with us, just feel free. I mean, if I have the time and energy, I'll definitely come in here. It's not easy to be doing this all the time, but you know, I couldn't sleep knowing that people were so mad about um, what really happened in that video. So I had to just come in here. It's literally 1 a.m. right now in Ghana, but I had to do this. So I just want to tell each and everyone in here, like, don't forget to like the video. But brother, please, um, uh, brother, don't forget to send the details. Okay? You want to make sure that we have your details and everything. And uh, please, um, hello, M Malai Malaika? Hey, hey, hello. Yeah. Um, um, I was, can you want to say something? Wait, go first. Yeah, feel free. Well, uh, yeah, I was just going to say on the uh, colonization part, okay, China, China in Africa colonizing mm -hmm. uh, Zambia. I would like to say, like, what is going on over there, really? Because when I do manage to go over there, I would like to know how do you feel about Chinese when the pandemic first hit, they came over and they called zombians foreigners in their own country plus black people getting couldn't get into hospitals or into shopping malls because only they thought only africans had it and there's another thing too have you ever seen the movie wolf warrior 2 yeah yeah saving africa yes okay so china and uh united states are basically having propaganda battles just basically who can be africa's savior basically i don't really feel comfortable with that so i would i would like get your opinion as to like how are africans and other uh africans in the dysphoria are going to work on building wealth for ourselves, not really needing a country aiding us and basically having them fight over who is going to be our savior or whatnot i would like to get your uh input on that yeah what? i i i i really i really understand um whatever you're saying, you know, like, like I said, in Africa, yeah, whenever you come to Africa, um, most of us really don't know who we are, so we tend to accept everything. We tend right. to accept everything because, like I said, if we know our history, we definitely not make that mistake that we're making right now. So with uh, the influence of China, I don't really, like, if you, if you ask me who I need to blame, I won't blame Chinese people. I believe the people in power signing those contracts and um, as if they are doing us favor. But it's not really favor because I know that they really want something in return. So this is something that I believe that if the entire African diaspora would join hands together on the Africans in the continent to help each other build the continent together, because this is what I've been preaching all the time that, you know, um, I even found out that in America, as an American citizen, like if you want to get a loan, definitely it's just one percent, two percent, which in Africa we pay uh, nine, ten percent of the loan that you get. So I believe that with that loan that you get, you can build wealth in Africa. So we should just stop complaining about how other races are. I mean, 
time to take over Africa, but let's come together as one and help build Africa together. I believe that we can do it because I've seen um, the job that the African diaspora are doing in here. Like, I get super excited whenever I want to do videos like that. So, I mean, I want to say it's time. The time is now. And enough of the complaints, we have to unite as one and build the motherland together. If we have to forget about our people in power, I don't even call them leaders, I call them investors. If you forget about these investors and we start investing in our own continent, trust me, Africa will be the place to be. So I really understand you, brother. Um, let me do this, please. Um, have, um, hold on for me, please. I just have a minute. Um, it's one o'clock when I'm finished with you already. But hey, um, have, brother, before I let you go, my, Mika, um, have you sent the details, your details to the email? Oh, okay. Wait, just, just give me a, a thing of what I need to send over. Uh, just, to just mention your name that you just, something, just something simple. Um, All right. I just, uh, yeah, just something simple. You just want to take it, blah, blah, blah. Just something like that. Something simple. And then we will confirm it and then we'll do all the necessary arrangements. Basically. basically send you my email and then we'll conversate. Did you see the email that I sent you? All right, through the email that I that you sent to me. Yeah, I posted an email on the screen. Like, if you can help me, because I I, I don't I'm not the one who's gonna check the email, but somebody is gonna be behind it and then reply everything that um, you have to do. So that's why I'm telling. I'm just trying to press on for you to send the email and give the details before it. Okay, All right. I got you, man. Thank you. All right, good. Um, but I send an email for him. Okay. Um. So. Uh, um. Okay. All right. Hold on. Yeah, I can hear you now. Just go ahead. Oh, I, I thought you wanted to say something. Leave him okay, my best. Yes, one. I did. I just wanted to say, uh, we appreciate you so much. We stopped in the middle of traffic to be a part of this, <laughs> and we're gonna head home, but. We want to bring you on Living My Best Life in Ghana because you Ghana, baby, Mr. Ghana, baby. Mr. Ghana, baby. So we got to have you on the live whenever you get a chance. The, the borders are open. Are you coming to Ghana anytime soon? Oh, oh yes. 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 yes, 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 we are. We're getting ourselves together so we can get there. Okay. I'll, 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 I'll be here. I'll be it's here with you. I love to. I love to meet both of you in person. Film my video with you before I leave Ghana. I have just yeah. a couple of weeks in Ghana before I head to Nigeria. Yeah. And uh, anyone from Nigeria watching me, please. Um, if you are watching me from Nigeria and you know any um one doing tremendous job in Nigeria in terms of business aspect, maybe especially diaspora who have set up a business in Nigeria who is really doing well, please don't forget to send me an email and give me his details and all that. I'll be able to reach out to them. Because I'll be going to Nigeria in the next two weeks. Yeah, I'll be going to Nigeria in the next two weeks. Um, so yeah. thank you so much. So what did you say? Okay, Kofi. I said thank you so okay, much for having welcome, us. We're going to get out of here, you. but we love you. Thank you. Thank we you. Love I have to have another sense before I go to home. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, Kofi, your final words, and I let you go for my next set, please. I have my final set. Yeah, Kofi. I want to say this. I want to say this. What my, you know, you travel around Africa and you bring uh, good things from Africa and showcase it to the diaspora and people in Africa. So, if this thousand plus people are watching us, I just want us to do something for you. I want us to, since you're from Ghana, we can make you an amb ambassador of tourism in Ghana or ambassador of African Union tourism for African oh. Union. How about that? We can have a petition for you. We can do petition for you and make an ambassador of tourism for no, Africa. I know. I, I, I do it, okay. people. So hey, I don't really. Do it. Um, I know there's so many people who are saying they want to do petition for that. But basically, I just love what I do, and I just don't want any title to make me feel like you know this kind of thing. But I, I I'm just doing what I love, and like I said, <laughs> this has been my purpose, and it's just like I was just trying a way to find my purpose and i'm so glad that i finally found it so it's not like right. i don't need any title of validation to tell me what i need to do but I, like i said brother this is something that i've always wanted to do so I, i'm just happy to be right now
So I don't really want because you know Africa corruption is even when they start giving you yeah. you can't do what you do right now. So I just told you that what I say let's do my thing and then yeah, just preach my message. I, I, to my I respect you so much. I respect yeah. you so much for what you do for Africa and uh I'll just so like to read you. you. Yeah, we definitely we definitely yeah. <laughs> I appreciate your time, man. No All problem. Right. Thank you. Right, yeah, uh, Malika, I hope I mentioned your name right. All right, yeah. Yeah. But you want to say something first or no? What? Because I just want to, I just want to say thank you, you know, for having me on. You're great, dude. You know, I'm gonna keep watching videos. You know, it is what it is. Thank you for the opportunity. But I'm, I'm gonna get on the email and I'm gonna uh, respond That's to you. I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be waiting for your email and um, make sure you get your passport. We're gonna make it happen. You're gonna be the first guy who's going. Like, this is something that we really want to do. I want you to be the first guy since you, you're 18. I want you to visit Africa as soon as possible. So yeah, get ready for me. Get your passport. Let me know which day you want to travel, and we're gonna fly you from the United States to Ghana. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, bro. All right. Thank you so much, brother. I'll be waiting for your email. Thank you. Thank you so much.